Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Good morning. He shall be for the welcome. Umbi Agindi. With respect to all of you. Like Paul said, my name is John Garcia. I'm from Santa Clara Pueblo. It's a Tewa tribe. There are six tribes throughout the middle and northern Rio Grande area, beginning from Ok Owinge, San Juan Pueblo, it was formerly known as. Ha O Owinge is our place, Santa Clara Pueblo, and it means wild rose path. And then as you come south, you hit San Alfonso Pueblo. That's Pohoke, Owinge. And then as you go to Powaki, it's Powaki Pueblo there, or Posumagi Owinge. And then you come on to Nambe, and that is Nambe, Owinge. And what it means is a, a round mound of earth. And then as you come from there, you hit Tezuki, which is just down the hill from the Santa Fe Opera. And that's Tezuki, Owinge. And Tezuki means coming into the cottonwood place. So all those pueblos are what exists now in Tewa country. At one time, our Tewa world ran from all the way from Alamosa down to Sandia Mountains near Albuquerque, which we call Oku King, and that means Turtle Mountain. But this was all Tewa country at one time in ancient times before the colonists from uh, Mexico came into this area, the explorers. Uh, this place, Santa Fe, before it became Santa Fe, it was known as Ogapoge, which means white shell place. And that village was supposedly located somewhere near what is called the Basilica of St. Francis. And then another place was called Indi Owinge, and that's Wild Turkey Place, and that was somewhere just up the street from here. Uh, but all those were Tewa villages, and then we had our southern Tewa people that were called the, the Tanuwin, or the Tanum, Tanumans. They were, uh, Tanuwin means near the sun, and they were the southern uh, Pueblos, and they were had a, 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 a reputation as being very fierce warriors, along with all the Tewa people here, because they were asked by the Hopi at one time, some three, four hundred years ago, to come in a group and to protect their villages from the Navajos, the Utes, and the Apaches. And so that pueblo still exists to this day. It's called Hano, or Tewa village. And then below, it's called Polaka. And those people still uh, live there in that village. But going back to those ancient times, they are, the Tewa people lived their lives out here and were very happy. But some 400 years ago, they were driven out of this area by the uh, Hispanic uh, people, colonists that lived here, and also they picked up a lot of diseases. So they moved into a place called San Wadi. It's up by Santa Cruz. Uh, it's now just ruins there, but uh, <coughs> it's owned by a private uh, owner. A few years ago, those people made a pilgrimage back from the Hopi country to try to come back to their village, but they were denied access to that. The owner did not want to have them come on to that property. So they had to stand about a mile away and say their prayers to their ancestors. But um, they hold their dances and they're happy out there in their pueblos. And um, so that's pretty much about the history of this area. But this morning when I came in, I went around the corner up here and if you get a chance, maybe you can look at that picture, but uh, it's a picture of Santa Clara Pueblo. And I was telling Paul 
how the Harvey buses back in the 1920s, not the Harvey tours in the 20s and 30s, they used to come into Santa Clara, and they, all the people, would, all the women would come out, and they would display their pottery for sale, and the kids would all run around in a group there, hoping to get their pictures taken and be paid maybe a penny or two. But there's a house to the uh, left of that, right of that picture, that was where I grew up in the 40s and 50s. And then when I got married, it would be almost 50 years in another month that I've been married. But that was where my wife and I first lived. And uh, so I was asked this morning to give, give a prayer in Tewa. And so with your permission, I'll begin. So if you can all stand, I would appreciate that. Thank you. まあ、どんでもね。お通じあんかなな。ね。たんで、へんでよね、ごきぽ。ね、おがぽ、ごきんでかんやで、インディオンけでかんやでは。ね、ごきんで。たさんフランシスコ、うんおんいこ。ね、
I realize I just forgot to say, my name is Paul St. Dalson. I'm a comparative amount maker here with the Department of Cultural Affairs. And a few words about uh, that department and the way our institution is set up. The Department of Cultural Affairs is a department, a uh, cabinet department of the state of New Mexico. And uh, there are four uh, divisions, with, museum divisions within that department uh, that are part of the museums here in Santa Fe that uh, the Museum Resource Division, another division of that department, uh, is a resource for. Part of those, one of those resources in MRD, the Museum Resource Division, is Exhibit Central, uh, of which I am part. And so Exhibit Central designs and develops exhibits for all four of those museums, as well as, <coughs> excuse me, as well as state monuments around the state, and occasionally some of the other museum divisions in other parts of the state that are part of Department of Cultural Affairs. Um, I, uh, initially, when we were planning this, we thought we would be um, an interesting uh, host because we are um, situated sort of midway between uh, a lot of larger museum institutions and smaller museum institutions around the country, if not, if not around the world. Taken together um, with all the museums within DCA, we're quite a large museum. Um, individually, each of those museums is somewhat small. And also, uh, given that we're a state institution, we're uh, always struggling with funds, which is a, uh, a problem I think that most of us encounter uh, daily. And so we, the sort of a unwritten uh, theme that we had hoped this could be was how to get the most with least, how to get the most bang for your buck with the least resources that we have available to us. Now, it turned out we, in a lot of respects, we were lucky to get any proposals at all, but it, I mean, it's going to be great at all. So uh, if, uh, I just like, I'm just saying that is so I'd like people to keep that in mind when we have questions and answers. If you have any questions, of course, for the presenters, that's great, uh, especially along that theme of doing, doing a lot with a little, of course, would be great. <clears throat> I would like to thank a couple of people. As a nonprofit institution, of course, we're beholden to many different uh, sources to get anything done. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Marianne and Jim McCaffrey for helping us with the reception that we're having tonight, catered by the Cowgirl. I'd like to thank the New Mexico History Museum, which graciously uh, donated the space here, the lovely auditorium, I think one of the best in Santa Fe, for us to have these days, this day of presentations and the poster sessions tomorrow. Uh, particularly the former director here, Fran Levine, was very supportive of the idea. She has since moved on to uh, bigger and better pastures. Um, Museum Resource Division helped us with some other funds uh, to get this done. I'd like to thank everybody at Exhibit Central for helping to get this done. Uh, I'd also like to thank the security staff here at this museum. They've been very helpful for us uh, to put all this on. A um, couple of uh, change announcements. Um, on the schedule we have uh, one uh, person that could not make it, Callum Strong, could not make it from New the New Zealand National Museum. Uh, they're doing a big expansion and he's completely swamped with that. He sends his regrets to everybody. He hopes to present his talk um, in some form or another online in the near future. Um, there's a little insert in your packet of uh, an after party tonight at the Matador Lounge, uh, hosted by DJ Prairie Dog. And there wasn't a date on that. So just to be sure, that is tonight. Um, and everybody's welcome. Uh, Tim, the DJ, uh, has a, a really, really wonderful collection of music, and everybody would be, uh, I'm sure, would enjoy it. The tours, one last thing. If for some reason you find you cannot, for whatever reason, make a tour that you signed up for, Please let us know because there is most of them are full already. 
and there is a waiting list. And as far as the ones uh, going up to the hill, we'll try to schedule enough time uh, for people to spend a little time in some of the galleries at the Museum of Indian Arts and Culture. Um, with that, let's get to our first presenter who made it by the skin of his teeth due to the weather delays, Vincent Avalos from the Asian Art Museum in San Francisco. Thank you. Tell me where the uh, Thank you. 